Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session of Start Living Your Life and Embracing the New Change in Your Life. My name is Coach Faisal Ibrahim. I'm an international certified coach and trainer, NLP master practitioner, health and wellness coach, and your digital marketing strategist. Today, we'll be talking about our life, how we need to change and apply new system, new programming, new thought process to our life to live a better and amazing life by using positive psychology, happiness advantage, and NLP emotional intelligence techniques. So we will start by talking about NLP. What is NLP? NLP is our thought processes that our, how we program, how we talk to ourselves, like neuro-linguistic programming. The term NLP is neuro-linguistic programming. The input, the thought processes, or what our conscious mind tells us, it's all about the things around it which happens, and our neurology, our system, our physical component, and mental being, and our emotions, how it reacts to it, that's our neurology. And linguistic is how we are talking to ourselves, talking to uh, using certain terms to act in certain situation. That's the language we talk within ourselves or with ourselves to process or to act towards a certain uh, situation. It can be some uh, aggression, it can be something that try to hurt us, it can be some emotional, or a judgmental thing. It can be some happiness also. So how we react to each and every situation, it's our neurology and programming. What NLP does, we reprogram these uh, languages that how we talk to ourselves and how we can be more empathizing towards ourselves, show empathy and reprogramming it. And we use certain techniques in NLP. There are more than 100 techniques developed in NLP, and we can use some of the techniques to reprogram our mind, to reprogram our mindset, and to go to a certain change in our thinkings. Have you ever tried to communicate with someone in a new country? Let's say you're traveling to China, or you're traveling to a new place. You cannot talk their language. So when you go there and try to order something, you're there to enjoy maybe that person might not know English. How you can talk to them? You will use sign language, you will use body language, or you use some other form. But still, the message might not reach to that person. So in the same way also, the functionality of NLP is how we can process our thought processes and how we can change our life, reprogram it. Like, I will give an example, many of us, have so many fears and phobias to start something, start journey of learning, start journey to quit something, start to maybe uh, become more healthy in life, start to control eating more healthy or making uh, decisions towards education, making big decisions towards investments or something. But we have our fears. We have our uh, human cycle, human mind is made towards uh, having fears of our evolutionary system that we always fear from something coming towards us and we always try to avoid it or run away from it. This is, we learned it as human for, uh, from evolution, but how we can change and talk more to our subconscious mind and teach it more techniques, new ways that I can be more uh, conscious about my living, conscious about my, my life, conscious about my family, conscious about my friends, conscious about others and how they will adopt or how they will be happy with me, how, how they will understand me more. So this is how uh, we can change our life. NLP provides a practical, result-oriented and highly effective set of psychological and performance tools. Like I said, there are multiple tools that we can use, okay, in NLP that we can filter around our 
uh, thought processes, whether it's uh, our behaviors, whether it's our actions, whether it's our biases, whether what our culture teaches, whether what we learn something, you know, we're, our thinking, we're stuck with it. So how we change those, we filter them by certain techniques. We can use different uh, techniques by using our senses, the sight, the smell, the, the taste. So these are the inputs that we get and we filter them and we use certain techniques in NLP and we filter them to change our behaviors and, and state and come to a different action. What is difference between a child's brain and an adult's brain? Okay, in a, as a child's brain, we don't have much things. We, we feel pain, we, we want to eat food or we, we cry for something, okay? We, we, our brain, our, our mind doesn't have so many things that goes around. Whereas in adults, we have our biases, we have our thought processes, we have daily tension from work, from, it's said that in a given time, there are almost like 10 billion different processing messages that goes to our brain how we can control all that processing in our mind. Our mind is like playing always a monkey with us. It's so many things that goes around. How we can control as an adult to live a life, a better, meaningful, and successful life. As a child, we are limited to our processing. Maybe you will say ice cream, the child will become happy. But as adult, we grow, we face so many challenges. We, we face so many rejections. We face so many downfalls. So our emotions, our uh, system have forgotten that to be happy with limited things that we have in our life. In this stage, now, how we can change and evolve it by implying new processes or new techniques. Like I said, our mind, there might be, now people might be thinking, oh, I want to go in somewhere. I might be thinking, oh, I need a, a glass of water. There's so many things in our mind, but being aware of the things that come towards us, enjoying every moment, controlling our behaviors and thinking towards positive mindset always. We should always think about a positive mindset. Like I said, as humans, we have so many biases, but we might not know our biases. Sometimes it can be, we are saying we are superior to other, it might be racism, it might be color, it might be language, it might be the way we are brought up, or it might be certain aspect that modeled us from our childhood. Biases about different gender, we are superior, they are superior. Biases about, you know, who is better than other. Sometimes it can be also, uh, we are biased towards like affirmation. Someone is being grateful, being thankful towards us or being friendly towards us. And then we reject it. Because we might thinking, oh, he's just making a fool of me. He's just polishing me. This is because of our biases. And biases build up from time. We are growing. It builds up. It grows up year by year. And it, it becomes, it goes to an extent that we are stuck with those. And if we don't reflect to ourselves and don't give others a chance and think from a different way, always trying to be in the shoes of others people be that what this person might be thinking what is going in their brain what why this person you know is talking to me like this or what what the the message came from analyze it try to analyze it and always try to be forgiving this is the only way we can move forward with our life and be more successful be a very forgiving person forgive yourself before forgiving others, small, small things happen and it's not worth thinking about it a lot. Now, 
we'll be doing one technique in NLP and I want everyone to participate with me, please. And this will take like uh, five to 10 minutes. First of all, what is this technique? Okay, I will, let me explain about it. This is called the swish pattern. There are, like I said, more than 100 plus NLP techniques. Some of the techniques are the swish pattern, mirroring and matching, reframing, anchoring, meta modeling, and others. There are many patterns. Okay, what these patterns or what these techniques help us? They help us to break our automatic processes or behavior pattern that happen towards an action or towards an event, whether it's a smell, whether it's a, a image, whether it's a thought, whether it's an idea, whether it's a memory, okay, and trying it to replacing it and thinking about something else. This can be helpful. The switch pattern can be help with the food addiction, quitting smoking, or someone have a grief or condolence, self-esteem, building up self-esteem, or building up your motivation level. You have nervousness. You want to go for a meeting or you want to join something. You're nervous. You want to change or you want to speak in public, or you want to like uh, sing in a, in a big stage, you have fear. So this can be used and like from five to 10 minutes, it's enough, like three, four times you repeat it and you can change and become more positive towards the action or whatever thing you're thinking about. So we will do the exercise. This will take like five to 10 minutes. It's a small exercise. I want everyone to relax. And uh, please, uh, uh, no one is looking, okay? Just relax and um, close your eyes. Yeah, take a deep breath. Hold it for five seconds and release it from your mouth. One more time, take a deep breath. Hold it. Release it. And this time I want you to take a deeper breath and hold it for seven seconds. Release it, keep your eyes closed. Just relax. Think of a thought or a memory or something that is bothering you now or has been bothering you from a long time, or you have a certain phobia, fear of something, and you want to get rid of it, or not think about it a lot. Think of that situation. Did you get that situation? Make in the middle of your mind, above your head, image of that situation whether it's an image, whether it's audio, whether it's video, make it a big image in front of your mind, bring it in front like a stage, you're viewing it, and already your muscles are trying to, you know, act towards this, you don't like this, it's like orange, red, and you can see the pattern of colors. So try to now think of a situation a happy moment in your life, whether it was with your kids, with your spouse or loved one, or some happy memory that you want to replace this thought with. We are going to swish the bad into good. Try to think of that memory. You can see it on the right side. It's there. It's an image or a video or an audio. It's there. Try to swish it. Bring it to the middle and try to make it bigger and bigger, center stage in your mind. And the other image, try to bring it towards the left. Make it smaller, shrink it, and this image, make it bigger and bigger. Try to make it bigger and this smaller and smaller. So this other image is in the front, you can see it. I can already see every one of you can feel this moment, amazing memory or thought, the happiness that you have in the center and the colors are changing to blue, green. And this other image, smaller, smaller. Try to visualize a bin. 
throw it in the bin, close it, make it small and make it go away. And just think of this happy moment, the nice moment that you have, the memory. Just try to make it bigger and bigger and try to feel the change in your action. Feel the smile, feel your jaws, feel, feel your face, the relaxing. I want everyone to slowly open your eyes when you're ready. Okay. Thank you very much. How it does that feel? Amazing. So I hope everyone is smiling now. The mind has changed a little bit. Okay, so these are some of the patterns that we teach in coaching. And there are like, like I said, 100 plus techniques in NLP and it helps. So practicing makes a man perfect, as we say, or a woman perfect, or a kid perfect, or anyone who is there. So practice will make you perfect. Keep practicing these techniques. And, and we will have like multiple sessions and we will be talking about different techniques and different examples, different uh, uh, practice together that how it, we can, you know, improve our life. This is, like I said, replacing the image by switching it, the bad one with the good one. Here we can see uh, uh, this person, maybe she has a judgmental towards certain colors and all. She's trying to replace it with a vacation, some nice place that she went and she enjoyed the holiday there. So now we'll be discussing about a very big topic, okay, which is uh, still in uh, evolving. And many of the psychologists, many of the health coach, many of the uh, philosoph uh, psycho uh, famous uh, psychologists, even on TV, are talking about it, Dr. Phil, Oprah, and others. And there are many books being written about the subject, the EQ. So what is uh, EQ and IQ, what is the difference between EQ and IQ? Okay, so here we see a kid mind. So when, as we grow up, there are so many things coming in our mind that we cannot control our emotion and we cannot different between emotions and facts and what, how to guide them, how to interact with people, how to interact with both intrapersonal level and external person, how to interact with them and how we can relate with the different and differentiate with talking to ourselves and talking to others. As a kid, as a child, our emotions, our emotions are built towards certain standards. Like we have some fear, we want something, we make certain action. But as adults, as we grow, we need to grow also our emotional intelligence. How we, our, how we can grow our emotional intelligence? We can grow our emotional intelligence by learning different techniques, different processes, and by implying it. And we'll be discussing about also the principles of uh, different uh, principles that we can use here. Like I said, what's the difference between EQ, emotional intelligence, and IQ? Emotional intelligence is having built up or boost your your certain level of thinking and building up in your mind, in your senses, thought of empathy towards other, being more empathy towards yourself and others in certain situations. Like there is no need for every situation to act upon. There is no need for every situation to be judgmental. Of. So sometimes we can show a certain empathy towards others. And by doing this, we are building also our emotional intelligence. It's said that the people, it's said the people who have the, a high EQ, they perform very well at work and they perform very good in their life. And there are studies being done about this. Book after book I have read, I've come to a teaching that we need to build a very strong EQ to become more motivated in our life also. And how we can do this also by self-reflecting. Before judging others, okay, don't try to judge yourself, but try to write, self-reflect yourself. What is happening in your life in certain situation? What action should I take? 
what happened in my day today. Try to re self-reflect what actions you have taken from morning till night. Self-reflect. Manage relationship more properly. By EQ, we learn how to manage relationship, whether you are working in a team, whether you're at home, whether with your kids, whether your friends, how you manage different relationships properly, how you can communicate and be equal like partners or equal partners in successful relationship with others, being more socially aware or social awareness, thinking about environment, thinking about other living being, thinking about other people, thinking about some uh, other people with some, you know, uh, disabilities or some, or thinking about different cultures. So being socially aware that you are not just in this world. There are other people also. Connecting with people socially also. Connecting with people socially, how you can connect with people, people socially by having some social skills take part in a in a, a move for cleaning drive of a beach take part in some other like feeding uh, some community or something or collecting a charity so all those social work also doing those kind of social work more and more build up your social skills and your emotional intelligence like i said from the time we are small until the time we grow we build up so many emotions but how we control those emotions, how we are self-aware, how we do reflection, self-reflection, how we are socially uh, bond with building up social connections, how we are showing empathy towards ourselves and towards others, how we are differentiating between emotion and emotional intelligence. It's two different things. I can be emotional by a sad situation that happens. Someone died, some grieving, something. I can, but how to live a better life that I can move? Will I be successful if I would be just thinking and grieving about that person and that loss and lock myself in a room and stop eating? Those, this is being emotion. It will affect my body it will affect my life it will affect the people those are connected with us maybe my family maybe my friends maybe at work i will lose my job how can i control my mind that someone has died someone close to me and what is the way that i can do it the way is by building up my emotional intelligence is there other way okay i will not forget about what happened it's very bad. Okay, should I should be aware about it, live with those or that person's memory, think about them, their good memories, good thoughts. Okay, we lost them, be aware about it. But we need to continue our life. And how you will do that by applying all those techniques that we talked about. Self-reflect, be motivational, socially aware, connect with others, Show empathy towards yourself. Show empathy towards others. Be more connected to others. Discuss with people. You practice more. You talk to people more about your emotion first, what happening to you, and you're aware of it, and you're going towards a phase. And then when you're very good at it, try to help others. Try to teach this to others. So like I said, in our mind, there are so many things going on. There are multiple things going on. So we should apply this six principles that can change our emotional intelligence. Like I told you, acknowledge our emotions. We are human beings. It's totally normal. It's totally normal to have emotions. It's totally normal to be sad. It's totally normal to be happy. It's totally normal to laugh. It's totally normal to be uh, depressed. It's totally normal to be having some fear. But there is a taboo among our social societies that talking about your emotions, sharing it with someone, it's wrong. You should not share your problems with others. 
Is this something like right? No, totally it's not. You should, okay, there are things, there might be people very close to you, you trust, share with them. It's not like you go on the podcast and share with everyone. No, you can go and share with your closest person, maybe your sibling, maybe your uh, loved ones, maybe someone from your team or your friends that you can really trust. So talk about what's happening in your life. Okay, what's bothering you? Share it. Sharing is caring, like they say. You cannot just share the good parts also. Sometimes try to share some emotions also. That's good. We as humans, like I said, we have happiness, sad moments. So try to share everything with everyone. Don't have that fear that not talk about it. Keep it within myself. Just, I will solve my problem by myself. It will not work out that way. You have to talk to others. You have to share with others your emotions. You have to have some kind of trust. You have to give a trust to build a trust. You cannot build trust without giving a trust to someone, giving someone a chance. And what our replies or what our answer you might get, it's not all necessarily like you imply or apply it. it you have the control. You differentiate between analyzing the different emotions or different thought process or different ideas that someone told you. And like I said, handling the emotions of others half after handling your emotions. Try to help others. Try to support it. Try to talk to your kids about it about emotional intelligence, what is emotional intelligence, how it works, how we can control, how we can self-reflect, how we can, you know, uh, talk to ourselves and be aware, how we can connect, empathize with, with others, empathize towards yourself. Sadness, grieving is beautiful. It's okay to sometimes shed a tear. It doesn't make you small. It's human. It's beautiful. And talking about emotions is good. Teach to your kids also. There are, there are parents which will go on telling their sons or daughters, don't cry. It's not good. You should not teach your kids or anyone, whether in your family or outside, don't cry. It's not good. It's a sign. Crying is a sign of also being human. It is good sometimes to help a friend or someone who want to vent, who want to speak, who want to, you know, talk about it. It's all right. Share with others, listen to their stories, tell your stories to others also. So here now we learned many techniques. I hope it was not too much for you guys. I wanted to make it short and understandable as possible. And I wanted you to note down this also. And I will be sharing with you also uh, uh, certain points that we discussed by your email. So you will remember it and uh, you will apply it. So now I would not say bad habits. I would say we want to change our life. We want to make our good habits also to better. Okay, we want to become the best to control our life. And how we can do that? Like I said, we should start a learning journey that we read more and more books. We should start a journey to apply certain learning and expand our knowledge about ourselves, about different people. Sometimes it's not okay always that our self is saying that this is right, this is wrong. We should also analyze it. We should see our capacity that our conscious mind is telling us it's right or wrong. Is there any other also process or a result to, towards this? Can we expand our thinking and our knowledge? Be open, show openness to others. Always be presence. This is also one of the new habit that we can, openness towards others. Don't close yourself. Don't be like, always like you're closed. You don't show emotion. You show always your good side. It's okay to just relax and be open sometimes and mirror with others. Try to experience it. Sometimes you cannot 
someone is just laughing and uh, you know smiling and a very happy mood and you go there and you show your smudge or your sad face uh, no and you try to connect with them you cannot connect you you have to mirror with people how they are they they're into music oh talk about music they're into sports talk about sports they are into uh, they're smiling oh uh, uh, they're sharing certain joy laugh with them they like to do some activity so it can be with your friends it can be also within the family it can be within any other person don't think that by being better or by being good you're lowering yourself you're not lowering yourself kindness is not bad kindness is good I and mean, this is what the world needs to teach to everyone there will be no need of policing around if we all think in certain way there are countries that have this system and they're working very well they don't have any policing they don't have anything that happens people are self aware of their thoughts self aware and self control what what actions they take and they are very much socially central people they are always thinking about others before themselves about the poor about people have eaten or not and our societies have been this way in the history but as human grew as the population grew as this world was divided more and more as this capitalism and other thoughts came in our mind we have changed everyone is boxed into their own lane no one cares who is my neighbor no one cares how my siblings are doing some people don't talk to their sibling and their family for years and why this is happening because we are not emotionally intelligent enough like i said these are the patterns of to develop our brain and build emotional intelligence always try to create new useful working practices for your life acknowledge whatever happens mirror to people and modulate like mother teresa said the more we judge people the less time we will have to spend with them if we are going to a restaurant or we are going to a certain place someone comes in or we are at work we start judging them looking at their clothes looking at their hair looking at their face looking at we start why why we are like this and we start also talking if we are with someone about that person but why we are like this why we cannot just be kind with others no need to judge others how you will make a new friend or know a new person in your life if you are being judgmental towards them there is no openness there is no kindness and how we can change that by having certain wisdom building our emotional intelligence like aristotle also said knowing yourself is beginning of all wisdom knowing yourself is beginning of all wisdom know yourself know your mistakes know what you can change what you want to change know the purpose of living in this life are you living a valuable life are you living a life of giving are you living a life of selfishness are you a person that will say after 10 or 20 years of your life that yes i have lived an amazing life yes i have been socially central person yes i have helped a lot of people it's not about just helping with materialistic thing it can be building someone mindset changing someone building those system and like we know there is certain ways we have learned and we just need to apply it in our life and how it's different between a low emotional intelligent person and a person with high intelligence emotional intelligence a person who has a very low emotional intelligence okay they might be very smart their iq might be better but how they are low in emotional intelligence they are aggressive these kind of people are always aggressive they are demanding they are bossy they always try to be the best in the crowd and they are always confrontational they always try to go into certain form of aggression 
And what are the other type of people? They are ambitious. They are driving. They are decisive. Decisive. Strong willpower. They have a very small, uh, strong willpower. And these are certain other examples of people who have low emotional intelligence and high emotion. How we can change it? How we can change ourselves? I will be sharing with you this slide also. It will be very helpful for you. And some of the books that I will recommend for everyone to read also that is uh, my ear, ears and ears of journey into becoming a life coach and a psychology researcher and a coach in health and wellness. So one of the book I would recommend is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This is one of the best books I have read is about how to talk to people, how to interact with them, how you can make people, you know, attracted towards yourself. No, genuinely, not, not fake. Genuinely, how you can make people interested being a friend. And there is another book also by uh, Dale Carnegie, which is how to stop worrying and stop living. How to stop worrying and stop living. This is also the topic of our session here. Like I said, there are so many things in our mind, how we can stop those and start living a purposeful life in our life, an enjoyable life. And there is another book also I would recommend, which is The Emotionally Intelligent Manager, how to develop and use the four key emotional skill of leadership. This can be also for anyone. This book can be also for teenagers or kids. It's a very famous book also. And there, there's a, another book also written by a philosopher. Uh, and uh, he's also a psychologist. And his name is uh, Sean Acker. Uh, and uh, The Happiness Advantage. The seven principle of positive psychology that fuel success and performance at work, the happiness adventure. This is also an amazing book that teaches, uh, uh, the author also goes around the world and does mentorships and coaching for big, big companies like Toyota, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Microsoft, and teaching happiness advantage at work and how uh, managers should uh, act with their uh, different stakeholders at work, different people, different team member, and what, what is uh, how we can live and work towards a more happy life and how our life can change if we just by applying happiness in our life. And there is another book also I would recommend, which is Positive Psychology, Psychology in a Nutshell, The Science of Happiness by Ilona Bonniewell. This is also a great book. Uh, it uh, teaches also about uh, positive psychology, the research, and many different work. And uh, of course, uh, this is also a very motivational book that I will be recommending, which is called Awaken the Giant Within, how to take immediate control of your mental, emotional, physical, and financial destiny by the great Tony Robbins. So, Awaken the Giant Within. This is an amazing book also if you want to build up, build your mental, emotional, physical, and your uh, uh, motivational mind. It's good to start with this book also. Okay. Now, I would say to everyone, thank you for joining me. It was great for having you all here. And I would love to see you in my next sessions. Thank you very much for joining and wish you a happy and successful life. Embrace the change in, within your life. Thank you very much.